Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Union Zor Education. Uh, today we will talk about uh, construction problems in, in geometry, primarily uh, related to triangles. Um, I have here, just uh, for reminding myself of what kind of construction problems I would like to consider today, it will be a set of uh, like five or six of them, six actually. Uh, and uh, I will basically try to explain how it, it's supposed to be done. In general, construction problems in geometry are very, very useful. Um, it kind of confirms that you know the theory, but at the same time, you know how to solve certain problems. In this case, how to construct certain geometrical object, like a triangle. Um, so that's why um, in the course of these lectures, um, and geometry, I, I think I will pay uh, a lot of attention to different construction problems. All right, so a few construction problems which are very, very simple, and they are based on um, whatever the beginning of the um, uh, theory of triangles actually is. The very fundamental theorems about uh, equal triangles are at the foundation of these construction problems. So, problem number one, construct a triangle by side, angle, and side. Um, angle is in, <coughs> in between these two sides. Well, we all know that there is an axiom which says that if two different triangles uh, have the same, uh, have uh, congruent pairs of sides and uh, angle between them, then the triangles themselves are congruent. Well, what it means, it means that we can uniquely construct uh, a, a triangle by knowing only two sides and an angle between them, because any other triangle, whatever else we can construct using the same three elements, two sides and angle between them, will be uh, congruent to, to any other. Triangle, which means, again, that construction problem is, is valid, actually. All right, so how to do it? So let's say you have three elements, two segments, and an angle between them. Using these three elements, we have to construct a triangle. All right, well, um, what we can do, actually, is the following. And it's very, very simple. Since we have this angle, we can take in uh, the compass uh, the distance between these two points on the first segment and basically mark it here. And then take another side and mark another side here. So this segment is equal to this one it's congruent to different segments are congruent, and this is congruent to this one. So now we can just connect them, these two points together with uh, using the ruler, let's say, and uh, and here we have a triangle. It has an angle given to us, and it has one side uh, which has an equal length since we are using the compass, which means it's uh, congruent to a, a first segment and another side uh, which is congruent to another segment which means we have actually constructed a triangle uh, by these three elements two segments which constitute their sides and the angle in between basically that's it very simple problem and again considering all the triangles with the same with congruent pairs of sides and angle between them we have basically constructed any triangle which satisfies these three elements uh, given to us. All right, let's go to the next problem. Next problem is construct a triangle by three sides. Again, in this case, it's not an axiom, it's a theorem about three sides. Uh, if one triangle has uh, three sides congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So, which means that we can actually construct, uniquely construct a triangle by 
three sides. Well, um, how to do it? Very simple. If you have three segments, one, two, and three, what we can do is take any segment, one of these three, let's watch about this one, and put it on any line anywhere on the plane. Then, using the radius, which is equal to the size of uh, another segment, not equal to this one, we draw a circle using a center uh, as endpoint of this segment which we started with. Then using another radius, which is equal to a uh, length of another segment, and the center at a different point of the first original segment, we have another circle. Now, we have two points where these circles are crossing. Well, obviously, since circle is uh, the locus of all the points distanced from the center uh, on the radius, then this segment is obviously congruent to this one, and this segment is congruent to this one, because that's how we, made, that's how we built it, right? And this segment initially was congruent to this one. That's how we started. So the whole triangle is congruent to uh, the three sides of this uh, triangle are congruent to three segments given to us initially. So is that it? Well, no. There are some nuances here. And the nuances are related to uh, the fact that if you have two circles from two different points of a segment, they might or they might not intersect. Consider this situation. If the segment we started with is too big and two other segments are relatively small, then these particular circles will have no intersections or they have something like one intersection just where they touch each other so we don't really have a triangle uh, in these cases what does it mean? it means that relative size of these three segments which are given to us is important it was not the case with the previous construction problem where we had two segments and angle between them because on the sides of the angle we can always put whatever uh, the segments we want. In this case, since we are looking for intersection of these two circles, uh, it might or, might or might not be the case, which means that the whole problem of construction of a triangle based on three given segments uh, three, different, the, the, the three, three given sides is not always uh, correct. It's not always valid. It doesn't always have a solution. It depends on the relative size of the segments. Now, to be absolutely precise, I can tell you that the biggest segment uh, should be actually smaller than the sum of two other segments. Now, in this case, when these two circles are touching each, uh, each other, then the length of the biggest segment is equal to sum of the lengths of two other segments. But if this length of the biggest segment is smaller, then there will be two points of crossing. And that's what we actually need. So, the condition for validity of this construction problem is that the biggest segment should be smaller than the sum of two others. Then we can construct the triangle, then we have actually two different solutions, but, the, but these two solutions are congruent to each other because this triangle is obviously congruent to this one. They are symmetrical 
relative to this uh, axis of symmetry. All right, so that's the second problem. Let's move on. What's my third problem? Okay, construct an angle equal to a given one somewhere else on the plane. Well, um, it's very easy actually to approach this particular construction problem using whatever we have already done before. Um, it's always like that in mathematics, in geometry in particular. You use what you have already accomplished uh, to achieve whatever the new height you want in your logic. So in this particular case, how can I build, uh, how can I construct an angle equal to a given one at some other place uh, on, on the plane? Well, very easily. Let's just take two points on both rays which constitute this particular uh, angle, draw a line, now we have a triangle. And we know already how to build a triangle equal to another triangle if you have three sides, right? So basically using whatever, um, whatever the uh, approach I was just explaining on construction of the triangle by its three sides, we construct a triangle with these three sides somewhere else, wherever we want to. Basically, that's it. Um, so let me just emphasize again, it's good, it's valid, it, it, it's the right approach in mathematics to say that this particular problem can be reduced to another problem which has been already solved by a very simple manipulation. Like in this case, we just draw a segment between two, uh, two points on two rays of, uh, of the angle and say, okay, the problem is solved because we know how to solve the problem of uh, building a triangle by three sides. End of story. What's next? Angle, side, angle. All right, so if you, have, if you have a triangle and you have an angle, a side, and another angle. Let's make it this way. Well, what it actually means, uh, we have to transform all these three elements uh, into a triangle so that this particular segment would be its base, this would be, let's say, a left angle, and this would be the right angle. Something like this. Well, okay, how to do it? Um, it's quite easy, actually. Um, what we can do is, we can have this original angle, one of these triangles, let's say this one, and have this segment constructed on one side of this triangle. So this is the segment which is congruent to this one. Now what we have to do, now we have to build an angle which is equal to this one. Okay, how to build an angle equal to this one? Well, we know how. We just solved this problem and uh, basically we just, you know, use it. Uh, if you want, we can do it again, but basically what I did, I took two points here, uh, converted this angle into a triangle, and constructed triangle e equal to this one uh, by basically making an angle, making a triangle equal to this triangle by three sides. So this is one side, this is another side, and another side. So I have all these circles, they're crossing somewhere, and so I get this point and this angle, and then just continue this angle uh, uh, until it crosses the another ray of the first angle, and, and then I get a triangle. Uh, I mean, if, if you want, we can actually use exactly the same uh, segment here uh, to put this point, in which case this point will coincide with this one and basically the same thing well it doesn't really it doesn't really matter it doesn't make the problem much easier it just reduces number of points so you have from here 
you have to draw a couple of circles here to get the point here. But in any case, we get exactly the same triangle, uh, which will contain uh, the base equal to congruent to our segment, which we started from, and two angles on, on both sides. Um, OK, so that, that's the third problem. Third or the fourth? That's the fourth problem, actually. All right, next is how to bisect a segment. So if you have a segment, you have to draw a perpendicular bisect. Uh, um, now, to do it, it's, it's really quite easy, because, um, again, we can uh, rely on certain uh, theorems. And one of the theorems was that in the uh, equilateral triangle, um, median and uh, bi angle bisector and, and the altitude from the vertex down to, to the base uh, coincide which is with each other. So what I will do is I will use certain radius. Uh, let's say we can take the radius which is equal to this segment. doesn't really matter. Uh, what, what does matter is that it should be big enough. And uh, using this radius, I'll draw a circle, one and another. And they cross in two points, because I took the whole segment, actually, as, as a radius. So they obviously uh, cross in two points. And what do we have right now? Let's consider this triangle and this triangle. They are both equilateral. Why? Because I took exactly the same radius from here and from here. So this line is equal to this and this and this. So these four segments are uh, of the same length, congruent to each other. OK, um, if, if, if that is true, uh, then if we will draw the line between this point and, and, and this point, which we already have, uh, and just um, uh, connect these two points together, we will have this line dotted line, which is um, what I would like actually to, to, to prove that this line is uh, a perpendicular bisector. But again, it's sufficient to prove that in both triangles, this line uh, is the bisect, angle bisector and uh, 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 median and, uh, and the altitude. Well, let's think about this. Um, what's very easy to see is that this angle equal to this angle. Why? Because this triangle is equilateral with these two sides equal to each other. And in the equilateral triangle, angles at the base are the same. OK, same thing. I can stay, stay with these two angles. They're also the same. Now, the triangles themselves, this triangle and this triangle, are congruent to each other because three sides of one uh, are congruent to three sides of another. So all these four angles are equal to each other. And therefore, uh, this line is an angle bisector of this angle. And since it's an angle bisector, it's uh, median, which means this point is the middle point of this thing, and altitude, which means it's perpendicular. And that's exactly what we need. We need a perpendicular bisector of a segment. So it crosses in the middle and perpendicular to this segment. End of story. We have constructed our perpendicular bisector. So again, we took this radius and made two circles from here and from here, and just connected the, uh, the, 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 with a line with crossing points. 
Okay, that's done too. And bisect an angle. All right, what if you have an angle and you would like to bisect it? Well, uh, there are actually many different ways, and uh, what I can suggest is the following. Take any uh, radius and uh, draw a circle when it, uh, crossing these two rays. So you have basically an equilateral triangle here with these two lines equal, these two angles equal, congruent to each other. And now what you can do is uh, you can continue using exactly the same technique as before and construct the perpendicular bisector to this segment. How? Well, very simply. We take this radius and have another circle here and here. This point we already have, so now we will have just yet another point and we have exactly the same picture. Now connect these and it will be perpendicular bisector to this particular segment, which is at the same time median and angle bisector, which means these two, two angles will be uh, congruent to each other, and, uh, and that's how we bisect this particular angle. Um, well, that's basically it for these elementary uh, construction problems. Now, what what is interesting is that in the future, when we will discuss certain construction problems, well, I would say more complex ones, um, I will definitely use something like, all right, let's divide this segment in two halves, or let's bisect this particular angle, or let's draw a perpendicular line to this particular uh, segment at this particular point or whatever. And I will not really uh, stop explaining how to do this. These are elementary mm, bricks, if you wish, uh, from which the whole building of uh, geometry is built, construction geometry is built. So uh, if you um, design a car, for instance, you don't explain how to make a tire. Basically, you say, well, we'll take the tire, such and such tire, and, and put it here, right? Same thing uh, with construction problems in geometry. You just use whatever the techniques uh, have already been established. And these are just elementary uh, techniques which, which I'm just offering, and there are many others. So whatever the new little technique will be, I will definitely explain it. Other than that, I'll just use it. So whenever I need it, I will just basically use whatever is necessary. Well, thanks very much. That's it for today.